Well, hello guys. So let's talk about part two of Eren Yeager. If you haven't watched my first video, then go and watch it. And now let's start with the video. So season four of AOT is a mess. Season four of AOT has great themes, but the execution is really poor, which makes it really hard to like this season. First, let's discuss the world building of the show. The world building of the outside world in AOT is pretty awful. It has already been mentioned that many countries came together in a blink of an eye against Marley, as Marley has been colonizing lands with the help of Titans. It doesn't make any sense for other countries not to seek help from Paradise in order to save themselves from Marley. If they helped Marley now, then after wiping out Paradise, Marley would be even stronger, and there are high chances that Marley would become the next Paradise, enslaving all of them. But if they help Paradise, a country that is actually asking for peace, it would be better and safer for their country. I have a whole video about it on why other countries siding with Marley makes no sense. I explained in detail there. And just after a decade, they will find a technology that will surpass titans as we can see in early episodes of AOT season 4 where they already made weapons that could take down armored titan they have to bring an army of titans to defeat them once they develop technology that can defeat the titans then they won't have to fear them as the only reason they feared titan shifters was that they were afraid of getting wiped out by them but once they are stronger they won't have to fear and after a decade, Titan Shifters will end as the curse won't be passed on. So season 4's whole conflict is based on a very broken plot, which makes the rest of the story pretty unnecessary and illogical. But let's just ignore the world building and look at the other aspects. As I have explained in my previous video, Eren's character has always been about freedom. At first, she thought that when he would kill all the people on the other side of the wall, he would finally be free. But when he came outside, he realized that not everyone is bad and actually some are even victims like him. But he also saw that he would never achieve the freedom he had always dreamed of. The freedom he saw in Armin's book, as people were pretty racist towards aliens to the point where they just want to wipe them out. We have already discussed the awful world building, so it makes sense for Eren to see rumbling as a solution, as he wants to experience the freedom he had always dreamed of when he was a kid. A world where they aren't persecuted anymore. And we got one of the best scenes exploring this theme where he is in the clouds, enjoying that freedom while people are getting killed down on the ground. Some people really think that Eren just wanted to see Armin's book side, a flatland, and that's all there is to his character. I don't understand how they think that it's deep and great characterization, as it is very surface level characterization and just downright stupid. But it's not true. Him wanting to see a world like Armin's book means that he wants a world where his friends or comrades wouldn't be persecuted, and he and his friends would be free to go anywhere and do anything. But it can't happen as people are afraid of titan shifters and they will erase them. So Eren went to finish them once and for all. And it was good until the ending where it's revealed that actually he did everything for peace instead of freedom. He did everything for peace between the two races. But if he did that for peace then it's the dumbest plan in the history of fiction as it doesn't make any sense and would increase the fear of aliens in humans even more. If his goal was peace then Isayama shouldn't have turned him evil in the first place and made him try to maintain peace with the other side after he destroyed their army and freed the oppressed people so that humans could actually start believing in aliens. However Isayama made him kill 80% for peace which seems so stupid as the situation will even be worse now. People would want to take revenge even if they can't turn into titans. This is what made the last conversation between Eren and Armin so stupid and embarrassing as Armin is the one who believed in making peace. The fact that he was talking to him and said goodbye to continue with his plan was also very stupid and out of character for Armin. Moreover, the dialogue writing was pretty pathetic too. Eren's character was good and consistent thematically until his goal was freedom. But it was totally destroyed when they suddenly made peace his goal, which was very sudden and out of character for Eren. Coming to the alliance again, it is good thematically. However, because of the awful world building, they seem pretty stupid. That's why they have so many haters. And their haters are also Thorfinn fans, who was even more pacifistic than the alliance. But thematically, it's good, especially for Mikasa. You can watch my video on her, which discusses how her character has always been about morality versus emotions. This is where she had to choose between her world and the world. It also parallels Eren, who couldn't go against it. This is depicted with an image of Mikasa as a bird, which represents freedom in AOT. She has finally freed herself from the thing that enslaved her, while Eren couldn't and was depicted as a devil. So Eren vs Alliance is very good thematically. A child who wants freedom and will do anything to achieve it, 
versus survey cops who chose the path of morality and decided to struggle instead of giving in to their dark side however the execution changing eren's goals and awful world building ruined it i don't have a problem with alliance defeating eren but i do have a problem with eren letting the alliance defeat him and making it a code geass ending Coming on to the other parts of the world building and lore that ruined the story even more. The back story of Yemir makes no sense as this is not how Stockholm syndrome works. In Stockholm syndrome the victim relies on the good parts of the abuser and ignores the bad parts as a coping mechanism. Eren Head from Vinland Saga is a good example of that. There could have been many who choose their morality over love but why did she only change after Mikasa and if she already knew that Mikasa would do it then why didn't she free herself before as she already knew that Mikasa chose her morality over emotions another character who was destroyed was Historia her character was just sidelined her pregnancy plot never went anywhere and again a girl loving her abuser in AOT I don't know why Isayama loves the trope of a girl and her abuser falling in love so much but we all know that he changed his plans at the end so that's it that was the journey of Eren Yeager as i said i like the themes and the main message of the show which is that total freedom don't exist and that you have to keep struggling and enjoy the small moments while also trying to make your situation better but the execution and world building were pretty bad and could have changed the course of story if handled in a way better way